Our next section is going to focus on precipitation reactions and net ionic equations. Uh, this is specifically for, if you want to make a note of this, uh, double replacement reactions. So don't try to apply any of the uh, rules here you're going to see later on uh, to any of the other types of reactions. These are specifically for double replacement reactions and precipitates. So what does it really mean when we say that a compound is aqueous, right? For instance, right, this is table salt, sodium chloride. Uh, aqueous meaning it would be dissolved in water. What that actually means is that it exists in water not as one whole unit of NaCl. It actually exists then uh, when it's dissolved as separate sodium ions that are aqueous and chloride ions that are aqueous. So if you want to think of it, it doesn't exist as NaCl. Instead, it exists as it breaks apart to sodium ions and chloride ions, okay, once it's dissolved in water. It's no longer together. So if you see Aq, what that really means is you can separate it, separate it out into its ions. Okay, a compound really exists as ions in water. It does not exist as NaCl, but rather as the ions. So a precipitate, we've seen this definition before, uh, it's a solid formed by the addition of two solutions. Key word, right, meaning it's a solid uh, by two solutions. So two things that are Aq, right? Uh, always forms as the result of a double replacement reaction. I said that at the very first slide. So what these look like, right, you've got a compound plus a compound. One of the products must be a solid. Okay, in this case, right, it's the AgCl, and that is the precipitate. Okay, I can spell it correctly there. All right, uh, how I know it's, say, this one and not this one that's a solid, we'll figure out the rules for that later on here. But notice we've got the silver and the sodium switching places, right? Okay, they're all plus one or minus one ions, so it doesn't really require a whole lot of balancing, but there's some rules that are gonna tell me which one of these things, if either of them, is going to be a precipitate. Okay, so since there's a lot going on in double replacement reactions, uh, we like to simplify them down into something called a net ionic equation. So before we get to that, let's talk about what's going on in this example reaction here. So we've got it's a double replacement reaction. You've got two aqueous compounds, or well, ions, or two compounds that are separated into four ions, and we make a precipitate, and we've got something else that's still dissolved in solution and separated out into ions. So since the ionic compounds are existing as ions in solution, really what we can do is break all of these things apart, right? So sodium ion, hydroxide ions, copper ions, copper two ions, uh, chloride ions, and we get sodium ions, chloride ions, and notice the precipitate, since it's a solid and not a Q, does not come apart, right? Notice that it's, throughout the entire process here, just stays together, okay? What we've done here in this process of writing every single ion out, this is called the complete ionic equation, where you show all the ions that are shown as well as the precipitate. Now, this is kind of a mess because there is a lot of stuff going on in here. In fact, uh, it's sometimes even hard to spot where the arrow is in that reaction just because there's so much going on. So we want to simplify that down. So let's take a look at as to how we do that. Okay, so looking at the complete ionic equation, what do you notice about the sodium and chloride ions? Hopefully you notice that there are sodium ions here. There's two aqueous sodium ions on the left side of this arrow and two aqueous sodium ions on the right side of the arrow. Uh, there are two aqueous chloride ions on the left and two aqueous chloride ions on the right. Uh, and so, really, nothing has happened to them from where they are on the left side of this arrow, okay, to where they are on the right side of the arrow. They've effectively kind of stayed the same. They haven't done anything. They started aqueous, they started as an ion, they end in the exact same way. These are called spectator ions, ions that did not participate in the reaction. They didn't do anything. They didn't change. They stayed the same. They're called spectator ions, right? Like a spectator in a sport, they're just watching what's going on rather than participating. So eventually we are going to remove them and clean this reaction up quite a bit. Okay, so removing those ions, right? If we get rid of the sodium ion, we get rid of the chloride ion on both sides of this equation. What are we left with? Well, we're left with uh, a copper ion, two hydroxide ions, and on the right side, the precipitate. Uh, and so what we get left with here is the ions that make up the precipitate. The two ions, right, the hydroxide and the copper two ion, giving us copper two hydroxide. This is called the net ionic equation because it's taken out all the stuff that didn't do anything. Okay. Uh, 
you can kind of sometimes just shortcut this. You can cheese it uh, by simply just, you know, if you recognize which thing is going to become the precipitate, which we'll show you the rules for here in just a moment, uh, you know that that's going to be the only thing on the right side of a net ionic equation, and the left side is just whatever ions make that thing up. So everything else just kind of conveniently drops out. Okay, so how do we know which one is the precipitate? So how do we know, for instance, that NaCl is aqueous but CuOH2 formed a solid? Uh, there's a list of solubility rules. So to determine a precipitate, we're going to check the products against the possible rules, and those rules are on the next slide. Okay, so here are the solubility rules. Um, it might not be a bad idea to just screenshot this so you have access to it. Um, I'll give you a paper copy as well, but uh, it might not be a bad idea just to screenshot this so you have access to it. So this kind of explains uh, whether we know something is going to form a precipitate or not. So the rules look like this. So if you have uh, any 1A metal or ammonium compound, those are going to be soluble no matter what. There are no exceptions. Those are you know, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. Uh, and ammonium compounds, always soluble. Rule two will state that acetates and nitrates are soluble, always, no exception. So if they, either of those ions appear, that compound is soluble. Uh, when it comes to these halides, chloride, bromide, iodide, most of those are going to be soluble. The exceptions are over here. So that means that the ones that are over here would be insoluble, okay? And these would form solids. So these would be precipitates, right? Because they're opposites, as you know, exceptions to being soluble. So these would be precipitates. These would be solids. Most sulfates are soluble. Here are the exceptions. So these would be uh, precipitates if they are on the product side. Here's another one. Uh, most carbonates are insoluble. The exceptions are 1A carbonates and ammonium carbonate. Well, that would be covered here by that first rule, right? Since 1A compounds are soluble and so is ammonium, or so are ammonium compounds. Uh, phosphates are insoluble. Same list of which ones phosphates would be uh, soluble would be 1A and ammonium phosphates. Sulfides are insoluble. Again, same exceptions there. Uh, and hydroxides are insoluble generally. And then here are the exceptions for the ones that are soluble. So we're going to use these rules here on the next slide to uh, figure out if something is going to form a precipitate or not. Okay, so let's try to put those rules into practice. We've got two compounds here that are both aqueous, so that means that they are separated into ions and we're going to add them together and see if we get a precipitate. So uh, it may not be a bad idea if you don't know the charge on ions ahead of time to just go ahead and write those out, okay, using your ion sheet. I'm going to go ahead and just write them across the top here. And we are going to swap the sodium and copper ions, right? Uh, and so the compounds we would form would be sodium combining with chloride now. So that would be NaCl. Make that Cl a little bit better. There we go. And the other option is, okay, so since copper is plus 2, the hydroxide is minus 1. The other option is CuOH2, right? Okay, and then we need to go and see if either of these form a precipitate. Uh, well, let's check the rules. So for NaCl, um, right, immediately, right, rule one will tell you that all 1A metal compounds are soluble. Sodium is a 1A metal, but also rule three, most chlorides, bromides, and iodides are also soluble. So no matter what, NaCl, right, even rule one will help you here with 1A metals, okay, they are all going to be soluble. So those means that they are all going to be aqueous. So NaCl is going to be aqueous, okay? All right. Uh, and then with the other one, there are no general rules for copper if we look at that list, but there are rules for hydroxides. And rule 8 says most hydroxides are insoluble, right, which would mean solid or precipitate, okay? Uh, and this is not on that exception list, so therefore it's insoluble. So this one is the solid. This one here is the precipitate, Okay. Uh, if you do this and both, we'll say it like this, if both products are soluble, okay, are aqueous, all right, then really what's happened is no reaction, and you'd write in R. Nothing forms. If both of these come out to be aqueous, that means everything started dissolved in water and stayed dissolved in water and nothing technically reacted. 
So if you, you know, set one of these problems up and it turns out that both of the products are aqueous, then instead of writing these as aqueous, we'd write NR because nothing has actually happened. Okay, here are three of them for you to try. Uh, if you, there is a precipitate that forms, give me the correct formula for that precipitate. If no precipitate forms, write in R. So first you need to determine is there going to be a precipitate, and then use your ion sheet to make sure the charges and everything balance. Uh, if no precipitate forms, right, if everything's aqueous, write in R. So give these three a try.